My name is Bukan, and this is my review of Wings of Fire, Book 3, The Hidden Kingdom, which was written by TUI Sutherland in 2015, 2013? Don't remember. Um, just a quick warning before we get into the review. It contains spoilers for this book, the next book, and every book in this series. So if you don't want that, please leave right now. All right, let's get started. So to get it out of the way, this book is probably my least favorite book of the original five. And that's mainly because it centers on glory. Now, I've said this in the past, but I really, really like the concept of having different characters be the main characters in different books and have it take place from different perspectives. For example, the first book in the series takes place from Clay's perspective. The second book takes place from Tsunami's perspective. And the third book, this one, takes place from Glory's perspective. One of the reasons I don't like this book is I just don't like Glory as a character. I feel, and this is my opinion, of course, but I feel like Glory is just a copy-paste of Tsunami's character, and I feel like they did Tsunami's character a lot better, even if um, Glory had a lot more development behind her. Now, speaking of development, let's talk a little bit more about Glory's arc in this book. So essentially, Glory comes, and Glory and the other dragonettes come to the rainforest because of how badly they've been treated in all of the other kingdoms. And they come to the rainforest expecting everything to be calm. And um, Glory is very disappointed to learn that the, rainforest, the rain wings are just um, slackers and they don't do anything really properly. So she's very disappointed. But then they realize that there's weird attacks happening in the rainforest and the rain wings don't care at all. So Glory and the dragonettes go and try and figure out what, who's behind them. And they find out that it's the night wings. Who are another uh, who are another type of the type of dragons? Actually, there's a thing that's written in the start of it, um, and I'll show you. Nightwings, which are these type of dragons, and they're the most secretive kind of dragons, and they feel, realize that the Nightwings are behind the attacks. So Glory uh, traces it back to the Nightwings and takes off into the into a tunnel, which takes her to the Nightwings home, where she's imprisoned and then has to break out. And when she frees herself, she becomes the queen of... Um, and the volcano that the Nightwings live on is about to explode. So she saves all the Nightwings. And I, this is one of the things I don't like about this book. They make her the queen of both the Nightwings and the Rainwings. Which I really dislike, as she's literally just one of the dragonets. She's only five or six years old, which I understand makes her about 18 if we make her a human. But I still think that's a little bit crazy if we're making her uh, a, a queen already and I find it a bit weird because I I feel like it would have been more suiting to make her a queen if you had to at the end of the series where it'd be like okay it's all resolved the first five books are resolved she can be a queen now but to do it in the third book where she still has adventures to go I still think it's a little bit of a weird choice um pushing on from that let's talk a little bit about the villains so the main villains of this in this book are so it's still necessarily it's still basically um Queen Scarlet's pretty much gone from the first book. But another villain in the first book was Morrisia. And Morrisia is one of the night wings that are planning the attacks. So basically there aren't that many villains in this book, and I don't think they're as done as well done as the first book or even the second book, of whose villains I didn't like as much as well. So I think this this book has the worst villains of the lot, and that's because there's just so many of them. Basically, all of the Nightwings are villains, and you can think of them that way because they're all they're doing horrible experiments on the Rainwings that they've captured. And so those are the villains, and then you've got Morrisia, which is another Rainwing, uh, another Nightwing that's um, in charge basically, and that's doing the experiments. Then there's um, Deathbringer, who's an assassin for the Nightwings, who turns good at the end, but is evil for most of the story. And then also you have another one of the, um, and then the queen of the night of the Rainwings, which is the tribe that lives in the rainforest, is also very just she doesn't care about anything. She's very lazy, which um, which makes Glory want to replace her even more. Which I've said it before. I'll say it again. I don't agree with, but I guess it happens. So. Just the overstuffing of villains makes each one seem less important, except Morrisia, because we saw him at the start as well. And I feel like they've rushed Morrisia's death quite a bit by just killing him off in the volcano.
because I feel like they could have done something a lot more interesting with that. Um, so overall, that's my review of this book, the Law, the Hidden Kingdom. If you thought, if you thought this review was helpful, I'm getting tongue tied. If you thought this review was helpful, or you thought it might help you in making your decision that you want to read this book, please consider subscribing to the channel because it would really help me out a ton. Thanks for listening. Bye.